Welcome to Brands Hatch. It's a summer special here. It is sweltering at the end of day one here at Brands Hatch GP for round six of Bennett's BSB for 2024. We're just going to do a pit lane walk. It's one of the longest pit lanes here at Brands Hatch. FP1 has just concluded. We've just gone past the garages there of Louis Vallely and Alex Olsen. Uh, Bushy Hedger here, Luke Hedger, had a fabulous couple of rounds at Knock Hill and Snetterton. I'm delighted to say that all the rain clouds we had from the last two rounds are well and truly gone. It's baking down here. I'll be dripping with sweat by the end of this one. Franco Bourne going very, very well. It was close today. Remember, the top 12 in the combined sessions today go through to qualifying two, effectively. Franco Bourne was very, very quick today. 18 riders covered by under a second. Uh, Lewis Rollo, of course, and the IN competition of Prilia getting his first ever BSB podium last time out at Snetterton. I, I don't think they're going to get any rain here this weekend, but it was a good confidence boost. Still no Fraser Rogers, he's out injured. So the tag racing team will be pinning their hopes on Jamie Van Sikelris, who made a good jump forward in that second free practice session. Dow Racing Kawasaki, as we've said all season, really, they're still look, looking to make improvements. And sometimes it's not what you see on screen, but it's hidden within all of the technical data of the improvements that are being made, that gap to first place coming down. And there are definite signs there that Danny Buchan is slowly getting to grips with the Dow Racing Kawasaki. Storm Stacy, of course, our most recent race winner, or new race winner, if you like, is in there. Not quite the same conditions here at Brands Hatch uh, as we had back at Snetterton when he was victorious. I think it's fair to say maybe he just struggled a little bit here today, but it was always going to be the case in dry conditions. A top 10 is like a win for Storm Stacy in the LKQ, Eurocar, Parts Kawasaki. Tom Neve had a pretty good day as well. Uh, he was hovering up and around that top 20 for most of the day. Billy McConnell, of course, it was looking like being a really positive Snetterton for him. Um, he was up there, he was fighting, and of course he was really strong at Knockhill as well. And then that horrible crash coming out of Corum where he knocked himself about a bit. The good news is the Australian is back out. Rory Skinner, we know, is recovering from that broken uh, tib and fib. So we send him our best wishes. It's a welcome back to the paddock. Uh, over in the corner there to Richard Kerr, the reigning national superstock champion, who comes in to take the place of Rory here at Brantach. It's a big ask, it's a massive step to go from uh, superstock. Of course, he's been over in America racing for the last couple of months. He's been given a golden opportunity to come and have a play, but there's a, a big learning curve for him over the weekend. Uh, next door, of course, we've got FHO Racing BMW. I'll whisper it pretty quietly, but it has been a poor season so far. They've been just struggling to find their speed. The good news is, for Josh Brooks and Peter Hickman fans, they were both inside the top 12 uh, just a moment ago in FP2, which means they're going to automatically advance through to Q2. Could this weekend be the weekend where the fortunes turn a little bit here for Hickman and Josh Brooks? Next up is the Hawk Racing uh, garage. Lee Jackson looked pretty good last time out at Snetterton and really good here today as well. I mean, when you think about, what, nine tenths of a second covering 17, 18 riders, it's not going to be all to play for. Charlie Nesbitt also is going to be looking, it's going to be so, so tight. Qualifying will be key here tomorrow. Uh, the Completely Motorbikes Kawasaki FS3 Kawasaki team have had a couple of rounds to forget, but Jason Halloran has traditionally gone quite well here. Watch out for the rumbling noise here. The BMW Cub Riders are just heading out for a bit of qualifying action. Let's not get run over. Uh, but yeah, Max Cook um, in FP1 this morning, they had something technically that didn't quite go right, so they've missed out on an entire session. O'Halloran, though, much stronger in FP2. I was going to try and get a word with Leon Haslam. Let's see if he'll have a quick chat with us. Leon, as tough as they come as ever, absolutely bashed himself to pieces last time out at Snetterton. Uh, where there's still no luck being delivered at your door, but tough as ever, fast as ever. That looked like a step in the right direction. How are you feeling and how was today? Yeah, obviously, um, Donington, we nearly won two races, battling for podiums. We had a tough start with a few mechanicals. Obviously, Donington was where we should be battling at the front. And then I had a run of five crashes and one brake inverter in my back. Um, I've had a, a nerve block in my neck. So, knock hill Snetterton, I think the four DNFs out of six races. So. Yeah, a little disappointing because I felt we was in the fight and then them two rounds has really put us on the back foot. Still top BMW, which is nice, but honestly, for me, now the focus is to try and beat those Ducati and Yamahas. Brilliant to see you out there. Good luck this weekend. Cheers, thank you.
Leon Haslam, he's the same age as me. I'll tell you, I'll be in bed for about six months, um, given what Leon's been through here. And uh, we'll just make sure we don't run anyone over, but good for Leon to be back there. And he was fast, he was fourth quickest. Um, over in the Honda camp, of course, this is the garage of Dean Harrison. He was up in that mix inside that top 20 as well. A rapid improver in BSB. Tommy Bridewell, let's see whether or not we could. Yep, we're gonna get a thumbs up from Tommy. Tommy Bridewell, second in the championship at the moment. And uh, it looks like another positive day at the office for you, Tommy, how was that? Yeah, thanks, Steve. Uh, yeah, all right, hot, very hot here today, which is lovely. I shouldn't grumble. We've had terrible weather of recent, but uh, yeah, it, it, it was positive, but um, probably a bit harder than I anticipated. I don't know why. I, just, I felt like I was going to be able to roll out here and just ride with a lot more ease and just go, wow, the bike's amazing. But I rolled out this morning and didn't feel, didn't feel that comfortable on the bike. Um, a few areas that we're struggling with, but as always, the team, we're, chip, we're chipping away. We're chipping away, and to be honest, if we're still chipping away and we're up in the top three, four, you know, the whole session, then I'm happy. So, yeah, I'm never normally a Friday man. I don't like to, I don't like to bite the screen, let's say, and do a lap time. I, I've done my lap time, and to be honest, I almost felt bloody out. There's still quite a lot more there, um, but. I'll keep that for the keep that for the special occasion court come race day. We'll let you get back to your debrief. Thanks, Tommy. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Tommy Bridewell, then, of course, the reigning champion, second in the championship at the moment. Quite honestly, it's been an outstanding year. A surprise to some, obviously not to Tommy. He's been brilliant on that Honda, so fantastic. Andy Irwin as well, another rider who, after his podium at Knock Hill, is full of confidence, regularly inside the top six. Now over to the OMG Griller Yamaha racing team. Sort of contrasting moods, I would imagine, in here. Kyle Ride's going to have to go through a Q1. Just missed out on making it through to the top 12. Both riders, perhaps, not where we wanted them to be back at Snetterton. I'm just going to wait for Chris to flick the camera around here to Ryan Vickers. He's got his hat on, and for good reason. Ryan, it's scorching out there, and you had some scorching pace. Not just over one lap, but your pace in general looked good. And after Snetterton, I'm sure you were disappointed at your home race there. This must be a big boost. Yeah, we had some issues at Snetterton, and um, we've uh, we found a solution. So I'm really happy. We've come back here. Uh, my bike feels as good as it was here last year, and we was able to win. So really, really enjoying the bike ride around here. I love these conditions when it's warm and it's hot. It makes it a little bit more tricky. Uh, sometimes you don't even have to use your head in the race, as in for tyre life and stuff like that. You just go hell for leather from start to the finish and you know you'll get there. Um, I quite enjoy it when there's a bit of management of tyre and you know, we're finding ways of trying to create more grip. And um, you know, we, We've still got quite a bit to do on the bike, but we, we tested quite a lot in that session, so I wasn't really out there trying for a lap time. So really happy to get into the 25s and uh, be testing a lot of parts, so it's really enjoyable. Ryan, after your unbelievable start to the season back in Navarra, similar conditions uh, to this, the last couple of rounds have been testing, let's be honest, and, and you've lost a bit of ground in the championship. Is this the weekend then you're looking at to try and reset and, and close that gap? Yeah, for sure. You know, we've been a bit unlucky, to be fair, and there's been a few things happen. So, you know, we're ready to, to come back now. I'm here to win. That, that is the only thing I'm here to do. Um, I know I can win. I know I should have been probably winning a little bit more throughout the season, but um, it is what it is. We are where we are. And, um, yeah, let's just uh, get back to where we should be and where we have been. So, yeah, looking forward to it. The team are working well, and, um, yeah, look forward to seeing everyone here. Good luck this weekend. Cheers, thank you. Thanks to Ryan Vickers then. Um, well up there throughout the whole of FP2. I'm absolutely sweating. Um, Kyle Ride then, a bit of disappointment maybe from today. I'm going to try and dodge my way out of here now as we move over to a couple of other garages. Danny Kent, of course, has been probably one of the most consistent riders outside of uh, Tommy Bridewell, Glenn Irwin, Christian Hidden thrown into that. In fact, you've got Danny's garage here, Christian's next door, both riders in and around that top four or five, as they have been all season long, and a chance for them to try and close the gap up on Glenn Irwin and Tommy Bridewell. And whilst speaking of Glenn Irwin, we now make our way over to the final garage. Now, Glenn might be a little bit busy here. Looks like he is. Do you know what? I don't think we're going to bother him. He's the championship leader after a brilliant ride out at Snetterton just a couple of weeks ago. And of course, 
We know that he's got the speed. It was Glenn versus Tommy versus Kyle here in the season finale last year, and we're expecting more of the same here. He's going to want a big round here at Brands as well, because let's not forget, Truxton is on the horizon, and Ducati had a bit of a nightmare there last time. I think that's enough talking uh, from me. This is how you can tune into Brands Hatch here this weekend. On Saturday, we're live on Eurosport 2 from 10.30 in the morning. Uh, we'll be off air again, then we'll jump back on at 3 o'clock. And then on Sunday, we're live on Quest from 12. And then we're back on air again at 3 on Quest as well. It's a bit higgledy-piggledy because of the World Superbikes as well. But the good news is you can catch it all on Discovery Plus as well. Four points in it in the championship and a baking hot brand hatch. Let's see who can get on that top step here this weekend.